Um, Void's story uh, as a show tells the, tells the story of two protagonists, Kim and Jackson, and um, their story is really that everything bad in the world happens to them. And the way in which the story is told is through this uh, sort of very large projection at the back of the stage, where, which is like almost like a cartoon in a way. It's like a collage of photographic images, and these depict the story. And on stage, there are four performers who do all the voices of all the characters and all the sound effects. So it's a little bit like, um, in some ways, it's like watching some people dub a movie in front of you. And the the, the story is, is really sort of like very, um, it's kind of like very naive, uh, sort of slightly stupid comic book feel to it. Uh, it tells the tale of uh, them being evicted from their their uh, apartment. It's set sort of somewhere in a kind of um, rather dystopian future. And uh, they have to go on a very long journey and, and you soon realise that that actually everything that happens to them is always bad, but somehow or other they always manage to survive. Void's story uh, for me started out as, I suppose, a question about you know how can you put on stage um, things that you, you can't possibly do on stage. Um, so you know, for us, uh, one of those projects that's really in a way outside of the, the normal uh, range of, of, of what we do, especially because it's got a story and um, it's got a story that takes place in lots of extraordinary locations, um, underground tunnels full of water or forests that have got gigantic bees in them or strange post-apocalyptic cities and, and so on. Um, I mean, you know, very often our shows, normally, they're, they're, set, in, um, they're set on stages. They're, they're, you know, they're set inside this world of, of the theatre. Um, so it's kind of interesting to think about, you know, what would you do if you've got access to all these kind of extraordinary locations? Um, and the way that we chose to make the piece was to, to construct it as a kind of storyboard, if you like, for an impossible movie, uh, you know, a, a kind of bizarre science fiction adventure. And then the performance consists of the, the performers doing the, the voices and the sound effects for this storyboard. I suppose one of the things that runs through all of Forced Entertainment's rehearsal processes is that it's a matter of finding things to play with. And for this show, for Void Story, it was very much a matter of going on the internet and finding different sound effects. Um, you know, what was the best kind of gunshot or the best sound of a knife going through flesh. Um, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, but the other technological thing that we're playing with this, in this show is a whole series of voice distortions, which is great because you think you're just speaking in your ordinary voice. But by the time it goes through the kind of EQ and various machines, it comes out either incredibly high or incredibly deep or just sounding like somebody totally different. So, yeah, you could think about it as a kind of shortcut to characterisation. Um, but it was a lot of fun to play with. The thing that I did, as well as um, writing a lot of the text, was to work on the images uh, for the piece. Um, there are something like 400 images uh, in, in the whole uh, of the show. Um, something like every four or five seconds, I think, or sometimes they go faster, sometimes slower. Um, and these images are made in Photoshop um, and they're made as collages. So I wanted this feeling that was quite crude and quite evidently not real. Um, so I made them black and white, and I made them using a combination of things. Um, photographs of two performers um, who we asked to be, to be in the piece, but only in the photographs. And those photographs of them doing all kinds of things are then kind of collaged into a set of backdrops or locations or 
situations that um, conjure the, 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 the story. Um, and what was great was making those collages. Uh, you know, I would think, okay, I need a post apocalyptic city, or I need a bizarre forest full of gigantic bees. And I would kind of go on the internet like, looking for uh, images that I could collage. Um, and I, I never took one image and used it as a, as a backdrop. What I would do would be to take many different images and to sample in Photoshop little parts of those images. So I might take one tree from one picture and one uh, set of rocks from another. Um, I might take one abandoned building from a picture of Prague or uh, Berlin or Dresden or Coventry after the war or something, and I would use those images to make up a, a, a landscape. So when I look at the pictures, um, I think you can see this in them, they're, they're, they're both, they're two things, they're, they're a whole picture, but they're also a kind of mix of uh, many different pictures that have all been stuck together, very crudely, because I wanted the audience to be able to see that the images were um, constructed. The act of performing in the show um, is is an interesting one because I suppose the, the text is there in front of you and what you're doing is really just giving voice to the characters who are on the screen. So there's a sense in which when you're performing it physically you're not really in it but vocally you're, you're very much in it so you're trying to make all these sort of idiotic moments of pain really happen. Uh, so there's a kind of funny uh, double thing uh, in the doing of it. And it's a funny double thing, I think, for people who watch, because you're watching somebody who's, um, yeah, who's just creating the noise of the performance. It's a bit like watching somebody um, recording a radio play. So uh, you're seeing two things always at the same time. That's something that we've always been very interested in. There's a kind of disjuncture, I think, for um, Robin and I sitting on the left-hand side of the stage as you look at it, because we're simultaneously being a number of different characters, as in giving them voice, but we're also kind of operating the music, the sound effects, the sound of wind, the sound of birds, the roar of a bear. Um, so it's quite an interesting performance job because you're looking at the page, you're doing the voice, but you're also really having to concentrate to make sure that the kind of sound cues come in on time. So it's cool, I think, as a way of being on stage. And that's different to a lot of the shows where you're kind of very much physically in something and giving a lot of physical commitment. What interested me was that when you're watching Void's story, you can see all of the parts. You can see these two performers on one side of the stage who are busy uh, doing all of the extra characters and adding the sound effects. You can see on the other side of the stage two performers who are performing the audio, doing the roles of the two central characters. Um, and you can see the screen up above. Um, which has got all of the projected images for the piece. Um, and I think, you know, what's important is that, that in the show, as in uh, all of our pieces, there's something left for you to do as an audience member. And that thing in Void Story, what you're left to do is to add up these things. So you have sound effects, which are clearly, you know, samples of some kind. You have these voices, you can see the performers reading the text, drawing on the script to do what they're doing. And you've got these images which are themselves made from many other images. And what happens to the audience, I think, is that you, you do this work of making all those things into uh, a story, into uh, almost like a movie, really. Um, and that's that's what interests me, this, this imaginative job that the audience is asked to do.